Today, I bring to you someone who's so special. She is going to just highlight on art and creativity to bring the inside out and just be that better version of yourself. Please help me welcome Nancy Rayner. Nancy, thank you for being here. Thanks, Maria. Nice to be here. Oh, I so appreciate you. Nancy is a professional artist for over 30 years. She received her BFA from Rhode Island School of Design and MFA from Columbia University. Nancy authored four top-selling painting books with Penguin Books and appeared on television for HGTV's That's Clever. As a contemporary abstract painter, Nancy creates exotic versions of heaven using gold leaf and acrylic. I love that. She is best known for inventing unusual acrylic techniques. In particular, her method of creating clouds and ocean waves. And she's got her expertise in a variety of mediums, including <laughs> oil, acrylic, watercolor, and mixed media. So she has extensive training as a certified working artist for Golden Artist Colors. Nancy, can you tell us a bit more about where you are, what you're doing, a bit more about yourself? Sure. Um, right now, I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico. That's where I live and work. I'm in my studio. You could see some of my paintings behind me. And uh, that's in the United States. And I've been painting for many years. Um, just really wonderful to be to be able to make a living doing something creative mm -hmm. it's very fulfilling and I love to share with other people um, any kind of tips or help I can give to allow other people to access their creative side too it's I think it's important in terms of being a human you know happy human being so it's just wonderful to have you here, having that source of uh, just artistic ability come out and for you to be as successful as you are in what you do and being creative. And I know that art and being creative, there's so much to it in terms of improving your health, reducing stress and just giving you that mental clarity and focus. There's so many just great health benefits from it. Nice way to put things about the positive aspects of of, of um, being creative. A lot of times people, when they say I'm not a professional and they say, I hear that a lot. And I think that there's this myth that you can't be good or you can't be creative unless you're good and you're not good unless you're professional. And I want to kind of break that, that up because good, good. being a professional is deciding to take your creativity and make a business out of it. And I'll tell you that can strip a lot of your creativity. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like two, two full-time jobs, you know, trying to be creative. And there's, you could be creative without feeling like you have to enter the whole marketing business world of, of art, which mm -hmm. that's just one aspect. You can have a job and also add creativity to your life without feeling like you're a professional. And I think, um, I just think that being that this feeling that you have to be a professional to be good, it it might um, curb people's desire to in, indulge in some kind of creative activity that would make them feel a lot better, that would make them feel like uh, they're happy and fulfilled doing, you know, it, being creative is using the right side of your brain. Most of us are familiar with the two sides mm -hmm. and our culture and society, mo I mean, every culture is different, but in today's fast paced world, industrial world, we're very left brain, but the right brain has so much to offer. It's, it's the creative side. The left brain is the words and analytical. And we go through school, mostly we're left brain. The creative, in addition to all the benefits you talked about, the right, using our right brain, which is what happens when we're doing any kind of um, art, painting, drawing, dancing, music, singing, writing, then we balance ours. We feel balanced because yeah. we're using that right side. How do you offer someone interested in accessing their creative side then, Nancy? Yeah, I think everyone should 
that has a vision, has a dream, or has a desire to, to do something, sing, sing, or write, or any kind of creative activity, you should just dive in and do it. You could take a class, but start doing it. What I can offer is, uh, since I have been, I've had a website, I've had that for a long time, I put as many things as I can for free on there. Um, I have a lot of videos talking about just being creative, um, and also a lot of articles on my blog site. Now, I do focus mostly on uh, the visual arts painting, uh, but I have a lot of things that are cro that cross over in different disciplines, just accessing that creative side. Wonderful. So yeah, my website, just hop on nancyrainer.com and, uh, you know, you can jump in and say hi to me too. There's a way to email me too. So I'm just going to backtrack a little bit. Nancy, have you always been creative? Uh, what were you doing before that um, kind of allowed you to go into this line of of area. Can you just highlight that a bit? Yeah, um, I think that there's, uh, when I was younger, I I wanted to, I was always doing something with art, um, but I come from a, um, my, my parents were both teachers. So it's a more lower income family. Um, and I just felt like I wouldn't be able to be an artist because I thought, oh, you need to be wealthy to be an artist because you're not going to make money. And so I always had jobs that had art flavoring to it. Mm -hmm. um, graphic design. Uh, I was printing, printing industry, all kinds of jobs, then teaching um, and then non-art jobs too, waitressing and things like that. So uh, I could express myself in paint. You know, I could always just go to the art store and get paint and paint. Um, and I did go to art school, so I do have that training. But once you get out of art school, you're really on your own. And you still have to deal with that fear of, you know, can you make a living? Do you have to make a living with it? So I kind of dealt with all of those um, issues. And I always had a job. And then I liked the idea that I didn't have to put pressure on my art, well, my creative side. I could just paint. Um, and that gave me years of painting. Then I decided, hey, maybe I could make, you know, more money mm -hmm. with my art. So I little by little, by little first I was uh, more money, you know, just doing jobs and no money making art. And then I would sell a few paintings and replenish my art supplies. And, and little by little, I just uh, changed the ratio where I was making more money selling my art and less the other jobs so that I could let go of those. I keep teaching because, um, and writing the books, I keep uh, those because I really enjoy that. Again, I come from a teaching family, so it gives me a lot of pleasure to teach. So I still do that, um, but a lot less. I used to travel a lot, do a lot of workshops, and now I'm really just painting in my studio. I'm really enjoying the fact that I earned <laughs> this, mm -hmm. this um you know, wonderful gift to be able to paint most of the time, but it took years and years to get to that point. And I think, again, it, it's that's why I, I emphasize to separate um, the professional part from painting or any kind of art, to be able to enjoy it and do it consistently so that you get really good at it. And you can decide if you want uh, to delve into the business part of it. What I want to highlight is that it allowed you to have the self-expression, to express yourself. What benefits are you getting from this <laughs> overall journey into this art? I would say that, let me start with, there's a, a uh, one of my favorite uh, writers, Nickel Ladies, wrote a book called The Natural Way to Draw. It was one of the main books that was being used in the 80s, long time ago. But he said one thing that I remember uh, really made a difference for me. And he said, when you're in right brain, again, right brain is the, is the side that we use for our creativity. It's timeless. It's when you're in the zone, you probably heard that expression, that. being in the zone, that's being in the right brain. Yeah. And he said, when you're in the right brain, there are no mistakes. You can't make a mistake. And the, so if you think about it, the left brain is kind of our intellectual adult, you know, that's trying to do the right thing, the correct thing. 
but the right brain is connected to our inner self, our deeper place. So instead of left, right brain, I like to think of it more like the inner self and then the, um, the, the, bo the boss, you know, that's trying to take over. And so we don't always get a chance to delve deep into our inner selves. And when we do, I think we, it's like a connection with ourself. We feel, I know that when I'm feeling kind of out of sorts, depressed or out of sorts, I remember I'm not connected to my inner self. When I'm connected mm -hmm. to my inner self, there's just a natural joy. And what Nicolaiti says is true, that when you're in the zone, don't make any mistakes. If you think about any child, any young child, you put pain in front of them. They never had a class. They, they just dive right in and they, they are expressing how they feel about, you know, um, it doesn't have to be very intellectual. They grab green and it's about greenness. You know, it's like, yay, green. Um, it can be very simple. So I think that, um, <laughs> backtrack to your question there. Uh, the main gist of your question is, is, you know, this connection of, of being part of having your inner self express yourself. And yeah. so with painting, painting is, creating a tangible expression of who you are. If you get really intellectual and you listen to a class that says paint like this and paint by numbers and get intellectual, you could make something technically okay, but it's not going to have the power that I like to um, impress upon my clients and students is, is I like to make a painting that makes people stand there and go, wow. You know, I want to make a difference in somebody when they view the painting. That means that I have to feel that when I'm painting it. Mm. So if I'm intellectual and I make a painting, the viewer has an intellectual experience. That's not, that's not a bad thing. There's plenty of intellectual paintings out there, but I have to be in the zone. And sometimes it's hard, <laughs> you know, can't just like wave a wand, you know, like Harry Potter and there you are in the zone. Sometimes I have to work at it. Um, meditate and do certain things, you know, warm up. So when, so um, when I'm in the zone, there are no mistakes, according to Nicolades, and I can allow my inner self to flow freely onto the canvas. Mm. Then, and I have a course on this, which is once you allow yourself to just express yourself in the painting, then it's fine as is. But if you want to sell it, and this is the difference is just like writing, you, you could express, write all you want in a diary, you want to make a book, now you have to edit it. And a lot of times people don't realize that editing is an important part of painting. And I've never heard it and from any other teacher or anything. This is kind of my little invention that when you get to a certain point where you've expressed yourself on the canvas, now you edit it so that someone can view it or read it like reading a book. They could view it and get this, this expression that you're that you have, they're going to get that experience, a deeper viewing experience. So for me, I like to go beyond the idea of, oh, I just want to get out my feelings. Which painting could do that. You know, if, if somebody close to you um, has has um, passed away, um, so I get this a lot. You know, people want to do a painting about that. It helps them relieve their emotions and and remember that person and express it. Or if somebody has a tragic uh, another type of tragic event. Painting can be healing that way. But I like to say, hey, it's a, it's a communication vehicle that I like to be able to express myself. And yes, it is a release in a way, a healthy release. But then I like to edit it and make it, package it so that somebody else can get that same experience by viewing it. Tell us a bit, a bit about how you get into the zone to create your best work. Sure. Um, I'm looking at the waves behind you. And I was just thinking that like any child, you don't have to tell them anything. They'll just run in the waves and be in the zone. Mm -hmm. You know, that we have, we, over the years, we're kind of taught not to, not to be in the zone would be crazy, you know? So there's a fear of being in the zone. Now, again, that left and right brain, understanding the, the two sides of the brain and knowing that we're not either side. We are, are like a, 
a, a large being, a large kind of spiritual being that has these two sides of the brain. And the left brain, it fears when we go in the zone. It doesn't want us to go in the zone. Um, it wasn't there in charge when we were little, but then we've learned to put that in place. Um, so the left brain fears that if you think about it, it's an old, it's an, it comes from an old thing where if we start to stare at a beautiful flower, we could get eaten by a dinosaur, you know? So it's our protector. The left side's our protector. And it thinks it's, it's very basic. It says bad, good. If we are distracted or go deeply into something, being in the zone, it stops us and it uses very creative things like you can't do this. This is bad. It's too expensive. All the excuses, anything words that we fear, this is our left brain. So it's painting and is actually not hard, I have to say. Um, grab a brush, dip it in paint and paint. The hardest part is getting over our fears. And our fears are merely our left brain trying to protect us. And so what I say is that, and by the way, the left brain starts all activities. So when you grab a brush and you start and you load it with paint, the first thing that happens is your left brain says, don't do this, don't do this. <laughs> but if you talk to it, so soothe talking your left side is one thing, a way to start letting your left brain calm down and not take over is to say, you know what? I hear you, but I'm not going to, I'm not in danger of painting. So just, you know, relax. And, <laughs> and then the left brain only works in secret, you know? So once you say, ah, you're trying to stop me from painting, it can't use that. And it'll try lots of different things. Eventually it'll give up and say, okay, great. I get it. Painting is okay. So the first thing you have to do is train your left brain to not sabotage you. Now, while you're painting, the left brain just keeps checking in. And so when you go deeper and deeper into your painting, when you're really into it, that's when it comes in and goes, are you sure you're, you're not good? You're not a good artist. You didn't go to arts. It does all of that. The more you notice, so it's really just being aware and not giving in to the left brain. Sabotage techniques. Just say, I hear you, but you know, so you kind of, you're like the parent with two kids. <laughs> And I always say, uh, breathe, blink, and swallow because the left brain holds your breath, stare like this, and you grip your brush. Then you're in left brain and you start to paint oddly. You know, it, the left brain, when it takes over your painting, <laughs> it puts in all the issues, all the <laughs> things that aren't right. Um, breathe, blink, and swallow. And the other thing is that eventually you use words, which is the left brain, to add to your painting so that you're actually painting with both sides of the brain. That's the end goal. First, you need to separate them and realize they're very different. Then when you're painting and you use words like, oh, this red is beautiful. I'm going to add more. Oh, look at this blue. Then you're using words, which is the left brain, to help you continue painting. Now you're painting with both sides of the brain and the left brain isn't scared and it won't try to sabotage you. That's Kind of when I'm teaching someone, I try to take them through this because, again, techni techniques, they're very simple. Do this, do that, do that. There you go. The hardest part is, is battling that left brain so that it lets you stay in the right where there's no mistakes and all everything you produce is going to be really powerful, individual, personal, interesting. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Like you, you <laughs> oh, really, just, thanks for <laughs> it's like I'm listening thanks in class. It's like, like, please don't stop, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. Oh. But I do have, I do have, like I said in the beginning, I do have lots of videos um, yes. where I'm, you know, talking about these processes and things. And and uh, the, if you go to my website under videos, there, it says free videos, and then there they are, and they hook into you. I'm also on YouTube too. So lovely. Yeah, yeah I good. love, I love that about you explaining the left and the right and that the self-sabotage and then you what did you say you breathe you breathe you, blink you, and swallow breathe blink breathe, and swallow blink and swallow can you breathe, take like, us through that like, yeah. yeah so okay so if you're in the zone you have no trouble breathing you're breathing fine yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're doing everything fine 
the minute that left, it's, and it's funny because people think, oh, I'm not good. And all they're doing is they're just giving into the left brain, you know, which is the sabotager. So the left brain tries to stop you from doing what it thinks is a dangerous activity. Okay. And again, that could be in any of the arts. Um, and it will, it will stop you. It will stop the breath. It's oh. trying to get you to stop and it will grip your hand if you're holding a brush. So now you don't have that fle- yeah. you know, flexibility and, and you, st- and start to stare. You're actually going into like a, uh, what is that fight or flight, you know, thing it's saying, uh, Oh, again, it's very basic. You know, it just goes, Ooh, this doesn't feel right. You know, you could be in danger and it puts all, so breathing, breathing, all of a sudden now you're, awareness is in your breath, not listening to those voices. The left brain uses words mostly. And then it does the, the tightening and the not breath. Um, so breathe, blink, soften your, soften your focus. Breathe, blink, and swallow. Now you're allowing your body to just do what it does naturally. And your left brain will give up. You go into right brain and <laughs> hopefully... I love that so much. Now, what do you have to offer the artists who want to further their career, just like you? Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, yeah so um, I love telling, especially women, especially young women. I love meeting, um, you know, my nieces, anybody. Some I get a lot of um, uh, husbands or grandfathers that are are bring their daughters or their wives or, you know, partners for a class um, with me because I love saying, hey, you could do this too. You know, it's possible to make a living out of your art. Um, I wish that someone had shown me that when I was young. I didn't know any artists when I was young. And uh, so I really like sharing that. I would say, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways uh, there's a lot of different coaches out there and my, my only, and there's a lot of good coaches out there. Um, the problem is the issue that I see is that a lot of the coaches aren't artists. They're not working artists and they just say, do this, do that, do that. And basically if you add that up, that's your entire day. So then you're not painting, (laughs) you know? So my feeling is that, you know, you, and I do offer consultations. And again, though, I have a lot of free videos on this on my site, but I offer consultations in one hour. We could go through whatever it is that's, that's keeping somebody from creating a, a business out of it. But I do like to really focus on what their practice is, what, they, what their needs are, you know, that there's a lot of creative ways to do it. And there's no one way. Uh, there used to be where everybody said, oh, you got to get a gallery, then you get into a museum, and but it, that's all broken up. Now it's um, really, and people don't want to hear this, but the first thing I say when somebody wants to make a living out of their art is your work has to be exceptional, not just good, not average, exceptional. If your work is exceptional and there's no reason why you can't make it exceptional, you just have to work hard at it. A lot of people give up too soon, I think. But if your work is exceptional, you'll have no problem making a living out of it. People will want to buy your work. There's plenty of, if you think about it, there's tons of galleries out there and they need art. They can't make money unless they have good art. It's a store, right? So it's like, if you have a good product, everyone's going to want it. Yes. And there was a point where I would say, if I look back, you know, when I first started painting, a lot of people copy other artists, which I did. I copied other things. I saw things I liked. I tried to imitate that. You're really on a learning phase and the work was all kind of different. And there's a point where you want to make your own work. Yes. That's big. To me, that's the sign of an advanced painter is you want to make your own work. You don't need to copy anybody's anymore. And when you start doing that, you need to give it time. You need to work on it and give it time. You don't have to do eight hour days full time. All you need is an hour a day, four days a week, and just stick to it. 
And don't let the excuses that the left brain brings in, you know, I don't have the money, I don't have the time, I don't have the support. There's lots of excuses. That's the left brain. There's no reason why you can't just find some time in the day, get some minimal supplies and start painting. And the more you paint, the better you get. And some people, I've seen some people get to such a mastery level in like a couple of months and some people take years and years. It's, it just depends on the person and what they're striving for. But once the work gets to a certain level where it's riveting, mm. you could do anything you want. You don't have oh. to hire a marketing person. You don't have to, and don't spend money on a lot of business stuff because a lot of times they're just giving you the standard and they're not really set. You know, everyone needs to be as creative as you are with your painting. That's what you do with your business side. How can, what is your end? I have this course that I, I really uh, worked hard on. <laughs> I really recommend it. It's called The Art of Painting Beyond Technique. Mm-hmm. And it tells people how, it's like eye yoga. How do you, it's not how do you hold a brush? How do you apply paint? It's okay, you're already painting for however long, you know, a couple of months, couple of years, doesn't matter. But you're at that point where, you want to make your own work. This is a eye yoga, how to look at your work, how to look at images in so many different ways that you make your work go from good to great. And then literally just go down the street to the local gallery, show them your painting, they'll eat it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so marketing that. and business can be very simple if your work is at that level. If it's not, then you could spend a ton of money and time and you'll get nowhere. So I know a lot of people don't like to hear that. You know, it's like they just want to go make a couple of paintings and make a whole lot of money out of it. And, and some people can, you know, but you, in general, how do you, it's the same with acting, same with writing. You have to get to a certain level where you push yourself beyond mm-hmm. average. Mm-hmm. Can you repeat that course that you have again, Nancy? Yeah, sure. It's called The Art of Painting beyond technique. I had trouble trying to come up with a title, but that's, that I think best describes it. It's an art. It's a creative way to move your work from just okay to yeah. exceptional. And it's, it has to do with ways of seeing your work. I do have a video on YouTube called is, oops, my <laughs> things are sliding off my head here. It's called, um, <laughs> Is it finished or six ways to know your painting is truly finished? Mm. And it's, it's free on YouTube and it goes through, it's a really a summary of the course. Um, if it talks to any, but I mean, I think just that video alone, it's like an hour, just that video alone could really help somebody uh, get some ideas on how to, you know, but, but it's based on this course, the art of painting beyond technique, which if they want to go more deeply into it, that course is available. Yeah. on my website and also on oh, there's a lot of online universities now and I've put my course uh for uh really af- extra affordable economy <laughs> prices on those sites they they price them and they yeah. they put them on sale for like an insanely small amount but that's okay I like being able to make it accessible yeah. Well, thank you so much. I, I'm, I'm so grateful that you have elaborated more on that. I'm glad I asked that question because that's so important. Yeah, thanks for asking. Know that, <laughs> that, you know, you have something out there which allows them to tap into their inner genius type thing, like allow them to be more passionate. And I, I, thank you so much. And I know that we're nearing the end of our time, but I still have like three questions at least. But okay. If we can just, um, if you can just let our audience know, how does all this art and creativity, if you can just highlight a few points on how this would improve their life? Sure. Well, you mentioned a lot of things at the beginning, mostly health issues, which I think are important. Um, I think the more that we are happy, and happy is a kind of an odd word. Some people at peace with ourselves, um, content. Um, I like to use the word happy. I don't have a problem with that, but fulfilled, doing what we feel we're on the planet for. You know, we're all here for a short time. What do we, what do we want to do? Do we want to work for somebody else the whole time and never consider our own needs? But when we start to treat ourselves well, we start to listen to ourselves. 
what do we what do we want to do and let ourselves do it don't say no a lot you know just say yes to some of those things mm-hmm. um we the stress we de-stress and i know it's speaking of health issue you were talking about health benefits a lot of the health issues are stress related and we have our our world it gets more and more stressful especially with all this technology and all these that's expected from us especially yeah, the young outlet. yeah an outlet that feels like we are cre- we are creative we are creative beings i believe we're all artists if we start with that basis we're all artists mm-hmm. just allow yourself to do what makes you feel good uh it takes the stress off it allows us now, I know when um, I've heard a lot of, uh, I can't remember where I just heard this from, but a lot of great um, mastermind in the, our history. Uh, when I read books, they, they talk a lot about, they get their best ideas when they're doing something relaxing. Like, didn't what's that guy in the bathtub, the Eureka you know, guy that invented, he finally figured out, he was sitting in a bathtub and he figured out the weight, you know, ver- how to measure things in water. It's, if I get stuck with my painting, I take a break, take a long walk, do something. And then I come back and I'm refreshed. And I think that that's the idea is we're pushing ourselves so hard uh, with the left brain. We're not balanced. We're not fulfilled. We're not satisfied. And that kind of stress eats away at us and creates health issues. So I think that it's just, how do we be healthy, happy human beings? And it, and it's being balanced, doing making sure we don't sacrifice our own needs for the main goal of making money, which, you know, we think, oh, if I make money, then I could do this, then I could do that, then I could be an artist. So I say, do it now. Whatever you think A to B to C to D, take, Mm -hmm. you know, what you really want is D, do it now, even if it's in a small way. It'll feel, and you'll reach your goal faster too. Thank I don't you. know if that answered your question. Yeah, no, that, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. I just now wondered, I know it's not all successes sometimes. There are parts of sometimes moments where it's very challenging. And so I just wondered, what are you finding in terms of artists out there doing this kind of work that you're doing? Like, what are the challenges that they're facing in terms of, of this line of work? In case someone out there is wanting to delve deeper into this for a professional, you mean to, for, for a professional? professional and, and even if they are just wanting to do it, let's say for like, like, let's just get my creative mojo back. What can they maybe just think about that might be challenging so that they, you can answer it right here as to what they can do about it? Yeah. Oh, that's such, I do offer free. Um, if you go on my website, there's a link that says, you know, if you say, do, uh, sign up for a free consult, um, I always give that because if somebody wants to work with me, we should be able to talk about it. And That's I right. do get uh, people who sign up for that and, and I really enjoy it. And everyone has a different issue. You know, the, I would say the most common issue is people who have, do not have an art school background and feel that they can't make good art. And what's really interesting is that almost everyone that tells me that when I say, can I see some of your artwork? And they're so you know, shy about it. I look and it blows me away. This just yesterday, I had somebody who wanted a consult, like, you know, just to look at her work. And, and I, I said, I have to tell you, OK, there's a lot of great teachers and good schools out there. But, you know, they're teaching. They generally teach a lot of dogma. I hate to say it. And that when I get a student who's had a lot of art school training, it's really hard to undo that, mm. free them up. And that most of the greatest paintings that I see are made from people that had no art school background and they're just expressing themselves, which is really what we want from the art. Once you go to school, you got to undo that. So, and, but people mm-hmm. think like, but a lot of what I teach, I didn't learn in art school. A lot of what you learn that's really important in painting is is on your own. I wonder if Van Gogh went to art school. Mm-hmm. All the great masters, the ones who are breaking boundaries, the ones who broke boundaries in our history, yeah. they didn't go to art school. So they made new 
new headway into the whole field of painting. So I want to say that um, painting is about expressing ourselves and communicating to someone else. And yes, art school can add some things to that, but it's just a small percentage, very small percentage. Mm -hmm. So if you don't go to art school, you're not missing out. And I'm going to get nailed on this one, I know, because there are some really good teachers. I mean, I, I teach and <laughs> I think I'm helpful. But again, I when I teach, I want to know how can I help this person, this unique person make their unique art? And for me, it's just like creating a painting, working with somebody like that. I don't have a standard template. Mm -hmm. I just have to talk through, find out what's going on. Um, I would say that's one of the biggest issues. And the other issue is um, that left brain coming in and throwing curve, throwing the curve ball at different places in our, pro in our progress and our development. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Love it. Your line of work and your passion, because I know you're really passionate about what you do as it exudes, like even the energy is coming off the, the, the screen as we're talking. I feel the passion <laughs> in your, in your voice, in your energy. If you can just share something really valuable about what you do in terms of what you see in your students, what is something that you love about what you do? You mean uh, teaching or painting or both? Like, Let's say both. I think when I teach, I approach it as if they're the teacher and there's something that I need to learn. Mm. And when I paint, the canvas is my teacher and there's something I need to learn. So I think that out of both of those, interesting question, I had to think about this. Yeah. Out of both of those, the idea is to stay open and be responding to the moments, being present. I think I started meditating about 20 years ago and it really changed my life. And it's not for everybody. I tried two or three different methods that didn't work. I was like, this is ridiculous. And then I found one as, you know, whatever you find that works for you, a system that works. I've been meditating pretty much every morning for a very long time. And it puts me in touch with that inner place it allows me to then approach life, things that come at us in a more responsive way rather than a reaction way. Like when I don't meditate, sometimes I, I can and I get all flustered and then I feel like things are hitting me from all dresses and I'm, I'm just reacting, 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 and sometimes not reacting the way I want to. Mm -hmm. um, but when I meditate, I'm more responsive. I'm allowing myself to really respond in the way I want to. And then I can paint better. I can teach better. And then I feel like I'm more at one with the world that day than, than feeling like it's me against the world, you know, which when I don't meditate. So I would say that really helped me um, have that kind of attitude that everything is a teacher. Everything is, could be, what could happen today? You know, that used to be, a little mantra that when wonder what will happen if you know I would say that to myself um you know well maybe today will give me a surprise I wonder what surprise will happen today and suddenly you're open to all these different things that we might be more closed off to if we're like on a one-way track gotta work gotta do this gotta do that <laughs> so what do you love about about um the benefits of what your students are getting from from you helping them Oh, I, I just love my students. I love my students. I have, I have clients that check in with me once a year, once a month, uh, every two weeks, everybody's different. And um, some just whenever they need help. But in particular, um, I'm just thinking of one student uh, started with me only a couple of years ago, beginning painter, uh, raw stuff on there. I mean, really interesting raw stuff, but so insecure because he didn't go to art school and feeling like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. He kept saying, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, you know what? That painting is really great. You know what you're doing. It's just, you don't have to. But now when I see it, after two years of working together and just the course, he took the course, which I, if somebody was to work with me, it's so much easier if they take that course, um, and then we have the same vocabulary and, and we can 
really make progress. We just, so I'll just meet for an hour, you know, again, the different intervals depending, but now it's interesting because he's retired from uh, dentistry <laughs> and he doesn't need to make money in his art, but he wants to feel there's, you know, instead of making money from your art, you could feel like, wouldn't it be great to make things that people really like? Well, everyone in his family wants one of his paintings. Mm -hmm. Then he got commissions. His friends wanted portraits. His, and oh, he's wow. so happy. He paints all the time. <laughs> and he's so happy. And I, I feel like um, somehow I was part of helping somebody feel good about their life. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Wonderful. Yeah. It, if I can help somebody move from one point to somewhere else where they want to go, then it makes me happy. Oh, thank you so much. Um, that's, that's such a lovely example of someone in a different profession, uh, diving a little deeper, wanting to create something different, and then found that there's a passion in there. Now people are loving his work. I mean, that's so beautiful. Yeah, he's just one example, too, because I have many, many clients, and they'll, they stay in touch with me. I'll get emails from people that have taken um, my, I used to teach that course live and I had groups of 15 people uh, for six weeks. And then I made it into a do it yourself, you know, with COVID happening and all. So um, e uh, people stay in touch with me and they'll, they'll send me invitations to their gallery show. I remember one woman who was really shy about her artwork in the beginning of the course and the course is about building confidence because you know when the work is good and you know, and that's that course I talked about. And, you know, a year later, she's having a solo show in a wow. really great place and sending me an invitation. And um, she wanted to check in with me about her artist statement and, and what she needed to make the show work. You know, so we talked about publicity and make signage and how to hang it and which paintings to choose and mm -hmm. um, all kinds of things. So, I can, and that's one thing I, I, I wanted to mention too, is that um, I can help people technically with their paintings and analyze them with their eyes. The eye yoga can also help people with the professional aspects about how to um, interrelate their artwork with shows and museums and galleries and the professional side of things to pricing. I get a lot of people asking me to help them pricing. I have this really fun way of pricing your artwork. It's an interesting, oh, wonderful. it's an interesting aspect, all kinds of things that, uh -huh. you know, play into being a professional painter if you want to go that route. Um, oh. But again, I really, you know, the first thing I'll say is, hey, if you don't need to make money at it, why not just have fun and paint what you want to paint, you know, and skip all that marketing because it's like hours a day, you know, marketing the business side of it. Oh, thank you so much, Nancy. I Welcome, appreciate Maria. you for being here and for highlighting um, this, this inner drive and in creativity in terms of artwork and just the process you took them through. I appreciate it so much. And even Welcome. the breathing. Oh, so many great <laughs> information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, just Welcome. highlight again where they can find you. Sure. Uh, NancyRainer.com. And my name is spelled a little... So it's N-A-N-C-Y-R-E-Y-N-E-R.com. Just go to my website. Hopefully, I've worked hard on the website. Hopefully, it's simple. Um, if you go to uh, classes, there's two uh, ways. One is the do-it-yourself courses. You can just get and do it on your own. And the other is how to work with me either online or I do have people coming to my studio uh, to do a day, you know, or a few days in a row and have a private kind of a, a concentrated session with me um, so lots of options and uh and then there is the video it says videos and free videos um and anybody can email me if they have trouble finding something on my website or and you have that gift that you wanted to share with our audience we'll, we'll put the link below. yeah can yeah that it? it's just an uh it's an article that i wrote which takes, if there's one thing about my course that helps eye yoga or helps you to see uh, in a different way to make your work more visually exciting. Mm -hmm. um, th th that's the one, my one favorite um, special 
secret tool. So I have an article for that. And thanks for giving that out for free. That'd be great. Oh, thank you so much. Inner Power Family, there you have it. You have a free gift from, you have that wonderful blessing from Nancy and all that wonderful information, valuable, just great golden information. I hope you took notes and some of the process that she <laughs> laid out. Um, I always ask them to, you know, have that, uh, their piece of paper ready so that they can review it. And so, Nancy, thank you so much for being here. I totally appreciate you and for shining light into this area to allow them to harness, you know, that power from within and bring it out and, and into the world. And so, so grateful for you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. You're doing a beautiful thing. And I, I hope everyone has a great time at the summit. Oh, the Inner Power family, Nancy Rayner, thank you. And once again, our segment has ended and it was beautiful. And it's just what I'd imagined to allow you to, to just be able to get a glimpse of what it's like for someone to be an artist and how that started for her, how she is using that success and that power to propel her into the to be the better version of herself. And it's something that everyone can do. And even if it's just to do it for your own passion, you can tap into so many things about yourself to bring that about you and all that hidden things to allow you to uplift yourself. And yeah, so many health benefits in doing this kind of creative work. And Nancy has gone over her website. She's got the courses, you know where to find her. We'll put the link below in terms of you following her some more and into that gift that she is blessing you with. Thank you for being here. Bye for now.